Welcome everyone to the Bowling University studio from the International Bowling Campus in Arlington, Texas. This is The Profit Break. If you're joining us for the first time, we're glad you're here. Give us 15 minutes and you'll be well on your way to improving yourself and your profitability. Do you ever wonder whether your facility maintenance team is really doing enough to help your business? Or are you just at the point of frustration and just happy they aren't hurting anybody or your business? On today's show, we're going to take a look at what it takes to make your maintenance department and maintenance team truly an asset to your organization. Well, in, we look at your maintenance team, could they be doing better? Could, could the department be performing a little bit better? Uh, do they know what needs to get done, what, what doesn't need to get done? I'm just going to show you a couple videos here. Here's a video of uh, a machine that's uh, running. This is uh, an 8270. Um, if you're anything like me, everything looks just fine to me, right? How about this video? How's this one look? Everything look good to you? Pin coming, goes over, okay. Uh, how about the next one? We'll watch one more. Okay, how about this one? What do we got going here? Pin comes up, goes down. Uh, if you're an 8270 house, does your mechanic know what's going on here? Let's watch these videos again with a little bit of help. So now, we're, look where the arrow's looking. Okay, I'm looking where the arrow's looking. We're pointing, I'm looking at the circle. If you're anything like me, I have no clue what's going on here. Is this good? Is this bad? I don't know. So watch another one, same concept. Pins come up. And now I'm watching a little different spot here. Okay, I'm looking there, I'm staring. I don't know what I'm looking at. One more, same concept. You're even telling me what to look at, and I don't know. It's not my skill set. I don't know. Your mechanic should. This is my point I'm trying to make. We're going to watch these videos one more time and with a little bit of help. This is a good feed. No spin. I guess the pin comes up, doesn't spin, just goes straight up and comes up the thing. This is what it should look like. This was the first of the three videos. Okay, now I know. Next video. Pins riding too long. Okay, they go too deep. What does that mean? Okay, they go too long. What is this going to cause? It's going to cause some pileups. I okay. And then the final one, the head peeking over the top. Okay, we. Uh, this is actually straight from another profit break. Um, we, if you've ever watched our other profit break on the 8270s, this was taken straight from there. And, and I learned like you, hopefully there. But we also have the maintenance minutes. And the maintenance minute is a series of uh, videos, much shorter than the profit breaks, uh, what, three, five, seven minutes at the longest, about little things that your mechanic can take a look at and watch to see on how you get your machines running a little bit better, uh, or yourself even, to know more importantly, how to hold your team accountable and how to get your team doing the right things. In another profit break, we talk about things that you can do to help them. And this is one of them, steering them to resources to help them get better and maybe even watching some of these yourself and kind of making sure that your team's working the way it's supposed to be working and that you want it to be doing. Because I, my goal, my personal goal is to never have this thing called a breakdown pair ever again. I want to remove it from everybody's vocabulary everywhere in the industry. We should not be leaving lanes dark. It just doesn't make sense to anything uh, that anything we do. The yield management doesn't make sense. We should, our machines should be working so well that if we ever have to move somebody once maybe a year, once every three years, I worked in a bowling center many years ago that over five years, not once, do we even have a blackout, not to mention have to move somebody. So it's possible. You can do this. And how do we do it? There's the three pillars of bowling maintenance that we talk about, and this is where you come in. You have to supply the right amount of labor to your team. You have to have the right parts and hardware uh, for them to have the right budget to make this happen. But I hear you saying, hey, Kelly, if I give them a budget, they're going to spend every bit of it. Yes, yes, they will. But you know that that's what it's going to be. They're not going to spend over it. They're going to spend it. And you know exactly what needs to be spent. And we talk about that in another profit break. We talk about that in, on our online courses. But you need to have that budget, and you need to supply it to them. That's your role from the management side of doing it. But it all comes back down to accountability. And how do I hold them accountable to what they're doing? That's the frames per stop. 
So you put these three-legged stool together, and that's how you can even have your team incentivized, right? Maybe your head of your department is held accountable to keeping to the labor budget, keeping to the parts and hardwood budget, and at the same time, achieving a goal of a better frames per stop. This all makes sense in your center when you start thinking about if I want to charge time bowling versus bowling per, per line, I do that through better frames per stop. And you do this with teamwork. You can't just do it on your own. You can't be pushing information down to them and expecting them to, to, to survive or, or thrive. You need to be listening to them. You need, need to give you feedback. You need to include them in your, your management, as part of your management team so that they, not the whole team, but at least your maintenance department uh, leader, whatever you call them, head mechanic, a mechanic, facilities maintenance manager, whatever you want to call them, they have to be part of that team. You can't keep your maintenance team out on an island. They have to be communicating with you. They have to be reporting to you. When that maintenance person comes to those management meetings, they have to report something to you. They have to report what your frames per stop have been. They have to report what they worked on this past week. They have to report on what they're going to be, what lanes are going to be taking down and when, so that they have that dialogue going back. So you're not, they're just not out there all by themselves on an island. And so I want you to understand this. This is huge. Centers with proactive maintenance programs spend less. It's like, but if I, give, if I give them all this money to spend, they're going to spend it. Yes, set the budget based on what you did last year. At least you know you're going to have, this is what we're going to have. And if you do it the right way, if you took the department's budget from whatever you spent last year and make it the budget for this year, you'll end up spending less and get better performing means. Because compared to centers who have no plan at all and no budget in place, centers with providing maintenance spend less. So as the leader of your organization, it is your responsibility. It's your role to give the maintenance team direction. You've got to steer them. They don't know how to manage a team. You're the manager for a reason. You know how to manage things. So if you can manage it, you can, you can get them performing better, right? So, but you've got to track. You have to do things and get things, give them feedback and give you feedback going back and forth. But it's your responsibility to get them moving in the right direction. So some next steps, what's your current status, your maintenance program, pinpoint the problem, communicate with your team, and what's the best case scenario of how the program should be running. So think about it, three easy steps. What's your current status and maintenance program? Where are you? Are we at 500 frames per stop? Let's get to 750. If you're at 1,000, let's get to 1,500. If you're at 2,000, let's get to 2,500. We can always do just slightly better. If you're having any issues, communication problems are always the things that we can, that are causing issues if we can get people talking about it. And then what do you want to do? How should we be running? What are our labor hours we should be running? What are our frames per stop we should be running? What are those things? And then finally, implement that plan. So as I talked about in another profit break, everything here is all about this time, we're talking about your team. How do I get my team move motivated? How do I get my team going? I've given you a resource here with the maintenance minutes to look at, and now you have two courses that you can look at. These two courses were written specifically for you, the leadership of your organization. Your maintenance team should take them too, but there's also seven more for them to take inside the uh, online programming. Oops, my fault. If you have any questions about strengthening your maintenance department or uh, would like to adjust, have just additional information about, about all of this, you now have three ways to address your maintenance department needs. The nine on-demand courses, the maintenance minute, which we just introduced you, and, and you're always welcome to reach out to us at any time here at education at bpaa.com. And as we wrap up another edition of the Profit Break, remember that what, when your focus is on growing people, people will grow your business. This episode, as well as all of our previous Profit Break episodes, are available 24-7 for you and your team at BowlingUniversity.net. Plus, new episodes are available every month, so mark your calendar, watch your email, and join us on Facebook to hear more about the latest episodes. Until then, I'm Kelly Bednar. Do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. We'll see you next time.